Here now, here we are. This is Ahmad of Palestine, and I am Dr. Ibrahim <clears throat> Weisfeld of, of where? Where am I from? <laughs> I don't have a from from. Uh, uh, of of um, the Jewish homeland of Eastern Europe. <laughs> yes, Warsaw. Yay, Ashkenaz, long live the Warsaw Ashkenaz, Ghetto. Ashkenazi land. Ashkenazi land. Ashkenazi land, yeah, in the Warsaw yeah. Ghetto. Yay, yeah. <laughs> here we go. There you okay. go, Ashkenazi land. Try taking us on, you know, we'll get you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, the Palestinians in Gaza are doing a very good job of resistance, I must say. They are doing uh, actually. It's like a miracle, like you yeah. know, uh, the the times and days of miracles gone a long time ago, thousands of years ago. But <laughs> I mean, even doing... the Warsaw Ghetto, you know, uprising was la only lasted one month. Yeah, uh, it, 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 they are hurting. They yeah. they're hurting big time. The Palestinians <laughs> in, in Gaza. I mean, you're talking about uh, widespread famine now, especially in the northern part of the Strip. Uh, people are dying, especially the vulnerable, like, uh, you know, uh, children, uh, pregnant women, uh, feeding, uh, 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 breastfeeding women, uh, uh, elderly. These yes. are the most vulnerable. Are They're dying every yeah. day yeah. because of the lack of medication and special feeding mechanism and uh, material for uh, women and children, especially, you know, babies, I mean. Just yeah. the premature babies, this uh, special uh, medication they give them and special milk, that yeah. is not allowed in. Yeah. So they're dying in droves, and yeah. the world is watching. You're just looking <laughs> on and uh, just looking the other way, especially the so-called uh, uh, the the civilized West, including Canada. Yeah, that's sad. But on the other hand. The resistance is doing an uh, excellent job in resisting uh, the, uh, I call them as the Zino Nazis. They are the Zino Nazis. That's their new name. That's what I call them, Zino Nazis. Actually, they, they are worse than the Nazis, but I'm not going to go into that details. But anyway, um, they are doing very well uh, in, um, you know, uh, the way they're facing off the Zionist tanks, uh, bulldozers, uh, even helicopters, uh, they're, at, they're shooting at them. So um, the Zionists uh, are getting ready to declare uh, the victory, uh, the long sought victory of uh, winning over Hamas uh, in mm. the next few days. That's this. That's what they are talking about. But now in the news news media, the Zionist news media, hmm. uh, they are uh, uh, Netanyahu is about to declare victory. Hmm. Hmm. Nobody knows what it's victory about, uh, <laughs> but nevertheless, it's the victory of of murdering and killing and destroying uh, an entire population uh, of two point three million, uh, over one hundred twenty thousand between dead and injured. Uh, mostly women, children, uh, innocent uh, men and elderies, uh, destroying about 8% of the Gaza Strip. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the declared aims of this so-called operation not was not met, which is the freeing of so-called hostages, I call them prisoners, uh, destroying Hamas, Hamas still exists and fighting. Actually, they are recruiting and uh, controlling all over the Gaza Strip, which they are not. Mm. So, um, but anyways, they are gonna call. They call it as uh, victory, and uh, they are talking about uh, putting their forces back into the north to fight uh, Hezbollah. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep. You know, like the point that you made, uh, comparing you know the the Zionist Nazis, you know, to the uh, to the German uh, Nazis. You know, the German Nazis, you know, it was reported, you know, were squeamish about you know mass murder, 
So they had others do it for them, like Ukrainian yes. Nazis yes. or yes. Polish Nazis yes. or Lithuanian Nazis, you know, yes. like yes. would do all this, you know, work killing off, you know, the Jewish and Roma population yes. for them because yes. they were, quote unquote, squeamish about doing mm -hmm. it because they were, you know, they're trying to act, you know, as if they were civilized, you know, so. Yes. <laughs> so here we have the same thing happening, you know, in the United States of America, imperial power is sending its mercenaries, who are the Zionists, to destroy a indigenous population in order to claim Jerusalem as the as the as their leading acquisition in the world, you know, like like Jerusalem is like a symbolic jewel in the crown of any imperial regime, whether it's Roman or United States of America. And or, or the Crusaders. Or the Crusaders, just like General Allenby, you know, 1917 yeah. walked into Jerusalem and said, this is the last crusade. Okay, he said so himself, it's a crusade, you know. Yeah, and the Zionists, you know, they're just acting in the same way on behalf of the Crusaders. They are Crusaders. But they're not full crusaders, you know, because they're not Christian. They're just mercenaries acting on behalf of the Christian crusaders. Absolutely. Yeah. The Zionist ideology did not come from, first from uh, the Jewish uh, nationalist fascism. It came from actually from the evangel evangelical Christianity in, yes. in, in, in Britain and in Europe, and more so in the United States. And uh, actually, the, the Christian evangelist who pushed the Zionists to accept Palestine as, I mean, they were working together, but they were telling them, well, okay, now we, we're taking over uh, Palestine, then you could come and, and establish your uh, state mm. that will uh, serve our interests. And of course, the Zionists, uh, they were more than pleased to do that job for yeah. the West because they be they believe they are part of the West. They are Westerners. They actually, in their deep mentality as collective psyche, as a Zionist, they are actually Christian evangelists more than mm -hmm. they are a Jew so-called Jewish nationalists. Yeah. You know, the um, AI program that they were using to target uh, 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 Palestinians in Gaza was initially called the gospel. <laughs> you know, that's the that's the Protestant name for the New Testament, I believe, the gospel. So they call their AI that's, you know, that was choosing like 200 targets a day to massacre Palestinians, and they call it the gospel. You know, since yep. I criticized them, they've changed the name. <laughs> <laughs> that solves the problem as far as they're yeah. concerned. You yeah. know. So uh, now uh, we are, I think, I think uh, the Zionists, they... Uh... They're hurting so much in Gaza, I mean, in personnel and equipment. And they they reach the point of no return. There's nothing, no return of, of killing and murdering and fighting in Gaza. They're losing, and it's a stalemate. They're actually sinking in the quicksand of Gaza. So uh, they decided after nine months to cut their losses and stop and uh, return the siege over Gaza. And uh, I think uh, they're about to attack Lebanon. And, mm -hmm. uh, that's that's, yeah. that's uh, my assessment to the situation. Um, there's lots of talk about why the Zionists would not attack Lebanon. But there's others. There's other reasons why the Zionists would and will attack Lebanon in a large scale attack. I mean, you know, terrorist attack. Because mm -hmm. their, their attack, their wars, they usually it's... it's um, targeting uh, you know civilians civilian infrastructures and because they can they and then go Hezbollah, like Hamas they don't have bases air bases or you know uh, ground bases or tanks so what they do they just go and kill and murder and maim uh, thousands of people but this time the Zionists uh, they gotta pay a heavier price mm -hmm. for such uh, attack because Hezbollah is not uh, uh, it's not Hamas, and uh, the geograph the geographical uh, response for Hezbollah, it's it encompasses all Lebanon, even the Syrian territory. So mm -hmm. it's not uh, it's not an easy walk in the park, as they say, 
to fight in the Azerbaijan. So the Zionists will uh, take a lots of uh, direct hits on their most sensitive uh, infrastructure in, in so-called Israel. Yeah, yeah. Well, the settlers in the northern uh, villages uh, along you the border colonies. with Lebanon, they've called they're gone. You know, religion. like they even left the country. You know, like they've given up on the Zionist project. You know, that's the. Uh, you know, it's 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 more difficult to convince a Zionist intellectually with with real Judaism, or you know, humanitarianism. It's more difficult to convince a Zionist with logic than it is with force. With force, yes. you know, they will realize you know that their logic doesn't work because. They have no logic, you know. It's just a whole set of cliches that they have going there. You yeah, know, cat folks. Imagine a, a whole theory based on cliches, you know, and and basically lies, myths, and then they exactly. rationalize it. You know, even the political scientists, you know, who support uh, uh, liberal nation state, you know, theory, say that uh, nation states are based upon myths, myths. You know, oh, yeah. And in each culture, uh, all, you know, national culture creates a certain sort of mythology to justify its existence and to mm -hmm. to propagate itself. You know, <laughs> this is what they think, you know, a nation is. They have no idea. And so, you know, the Zionists, you know, they, they're into it. You know, they're into, you know, like, uh, you know, the, the, you know, the liberal nation state, you know, that was developed in the Reformation, you know, like in 1648, you know, they were so obsolete. <clears throat> And and they create you know certain myths you know that there was a land without a people for a people without a land and you know amongst others, and uh, to justify their project, and even though they know it's not true, even though they're they're lying, they all know that they are lying, but they agree to lie, and therefore it's okay you know because there's nobody to say that it's a lie except for me <laughs> standing well, there at the vigil in front of the Jewish community campus. <laughs> Few, few like you uh, around the world. Uh, there's more Jews who are waking up to mm. the Zionist uh, lie about mm. uh, Palestine. The younger uh, actually, generation, yeah, especially in the yeah, United States, you know, Jewish absolutely. you know people, they're a majority, you know, against the genocide in Gaza. Yes, I yes, wouldn't say more... the majority of Jews are not the majority of Jews. Just the majority yeah, of the, the younger generations. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And it's a, it's a real uh, pleasure to, to me to see mm. this happening. Uh, you know, seeing the reality behind who are the real Jews and who are the Zionists. I mean, there's a big divide. I mean, real clear divide now. Mm. Before, it used to be like a, a fogginess or kind of a, a gray area between mm. Judaism and Zionism because they made it to be, okay? Mm. And there's only few, very few like you, who knew what Zionism was all about. And people in the world, I mean, even Arabs, they didn't know the difference. Mm. Okay? Now, what the Zionists did, they did a real disservice to themselves by exposing themselves to the world and more, um, more, more so to the Jews around the world of, of knowing that Zionism is not Judaism and Judaism is not absolutely is not Zionism. Mm -hmm. Yes, when I was in Nablus, you know, the the Palestinian teachers that taught their students that uh, not all Zionists are Jewish and not all Jewish people are Zionists. Yes, <laughs> and the students, my students who would come, you know, for English classes, you know, they repeated this to me, you know, because they were taught this, you know, in the UN schools. It was such a pleasure to be able to hear that, you know, inside Palestine. It was so wonderful. And it's true, you know, like it used to be, you know, for decades, it was just a few isolated individuals like me, you know, who were fighting against Zionism. And we were treated as, you know, like a, 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 a in French, we have an expression called a petit rien de tout, you know, a little, a little bit of nothing, you know, that's what we were. But, you know, like you cannot stop logic. No, you know, logic exists, me. logic lives. And it will spring up spontaneously, you know, yeah. even in the absence, you know, of its initiator, you okay. know, like you know, the logic of it, you know, will will reappear, you know, to various people. Right now, for instance, you know, in the book that I published a couple of years ago, the Federation of Palestinian and Hebrew Nations, 
otherwise known as the no state solution. Well, Daniel Boy Boyarin, who's a you know an academic, you know, with a position at a university, has just got a book published by Yale University Press called The No State Solution. <laughs> Oh. Yale University Press. And in the introduction, he refers to, favorably, he refers to the Yiddish Socialist Bund. That's our oh. movement. And oh. he's also a member of the Jews who speak out, you know, list that I've been, you know, sending information to, you know, like for for years. So, you know, that's one example, you know. And he does a critique of Zionism uh, from the Talmudic perspective, from a Judaic perspective. Because in Judaism... You know, Zionism has no place. In, in, in particular, the, the, the prophet of the early prophet Samuel said that, you know, uh, the Jewish people are, are not a nation like other nations, even though the Jewish people were demanding it at the time, uh, that there should be no king. There should be no state. The Jewish people are a people, not a state. This is what Samuel said. But the people were asking for a king anyway. So Samuel relented and said, okay, you know, if you want a king, you know, like, that worker's son over there is going to be your king. <laughs> and that was Saul, the first king. <laughs> and then he turned into a despot, you know, got carried away. And then uh, David came and uh, got rid of him. And then, you know, but David was not allowed to build a temple because he had blood on his hands, quote unquote. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, it's what a, you know, this, this whole thing of a state, you know, and kings, you know, you know such a disaster. But... <clears throat> There are certain threads in Judaism that were knitted together, weaved together by the Protestants to create this whole Zionist thing and say that it was originally Judaism, that it's not. It comes from Protestant Christianity. About 1835 was the first set of mention of this in modern times. But originally, <laughs> it was Cromwell, the big revolutionary in England, you know, like uh, who... who uh, liberated England and made it, you know, into a nation state. He was the one who wanted to send the British Jewish population to Palestine to claim it on behalf of the British Empire by converting the po Jewish population to Anglicanism, you know, which yeah. is another form of Protestantism. But the British Jewish population refused. Same thing with Napoleon. He tried to send the Moroccan Jewish population to Palestine to claim <clears throat> the land on behalf of the French Empire. He and was defeated. He, he was defeated in the Levant. That's why. That's he, right. It's uh, Palestine that defeated he, Net, uh, Napoleon at Acre. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He was defeated there. That's why the whole thing, the whole project, uh, fell apart. And also because the Moroccan Jewish population, they didn't want to leave Morocco. <laughs> well, uh, why would they? Yeah. Why would really? They? You know, it's I their mean, homeland. They are Moroccans. They're not. They're not uh, French or uh, Levant. Levant. Yeah. yeah. They live in their homeland, and they don't need to go anywhere. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's, you know what? What the Zionists had done to the the Ashkenazi Jews? Actually, sure. they are they, they did what they did to the Palestinians of uprooting them from their culture, from their language, from even their names, and morph them into a, a make believe nation of, of Israelites. Even their names being changed from yeah. you know Ashkenazi names to uh, more Hebrew names like all these names like Netanyahu, uh, mm. Golda Meir, all those uh, big leaders. All them. They, yeah. they all had European last names. They changed their names. They ditched their own language. Could you believe it? How sick mm. these people are! They ditched their own language. Well, they suppressed. Language. They suppressed and the language of Yiddish. My language. On, my uh, yeah. using. Uh, they used that uh, morphed, uh, created by one person uh, called yeah. uh, <laughs> the 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 modern Hebrew language, which is filled uh -huh. with Arabic and English and French uh -huh. and Italian and you name uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. So. And they did that to the palace to the Arab Jews. They did the same thing to the Arab yeah. Jews. They just yeah. took them out of their homelands and um, they uprooted them. They uh, made them not to speak. Oh, we lost the connection with Ahmad. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that Hebrew the way they want. It's 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 a it's a it's a massacre of of uh, 
uh, of two or three different uh, peoples, the Palestinians, the uh, Arab Jews, and the uh, Ashkenazi Jews. Mm. It's, it's a horrible, horrible uh, massacre the Zionists and their Western backers had done for over, for, for over 100 years to, mm. to all these people. Like I, I am in contact with a person um, who is from N- Natori Karta, but he is actually a, an Arab Jew. He is not an Ashkenazi Jew. Mm. Okay, and his parents come from uh, from uh, Iraq, and uh, we were talking to him all the time in Arabic, and he he identified more more so to be an Arab than an Israeli, and he told me that. His parents cursed every moment they lived in so-called Israel until mm. they died. They mm. were were so attached to their own country, but they were actually abducted. And that's what he told me. They were abducted from Baghdad, Iraq, to be part of their Zionist, uh, the Zionist states. That's why him and his siblings, they're anti-Zionists. Mm-hmm. And he is actually more, more Palestinian than Lots of Palestinians, hmm. and I'm very, I'm very uh, pleased to knowing him. I just was introduced to him in the past few months by another uh, gentleman from Nato. Well, he's he's a freelance Natori Carta. He's an Ashkenazi Jew. I don't want to use names because I'm not. I didn't get permission to use names. Who I've known him for the past at least uh, twenty five years. Hmm. So. Um, Yes, uh, Zionism is evil. It's actually worse than the Nazis. When you, the more you think of what the Zionist has done in Palestine and to the Jews around the world, is nothing comparing to what the Nazis had done in six years to the Jews. Uh, although yeah. yes, the number is bigger, but the ramification of, of on on culture, language. Uh, uh, you name it, being destroyed. I mean, mm. yes, they killed six million Jews, but they did not destroy the Jewish uh, identity. Those mm. people, they k- destroyed the Jewish identity, the authentic Jewish com- uh, identity of, mm. of Ashkenazi Jews and the Arab Jews. Yes, they destroyed my language, you know. Absolutely. My first language, my my language, you know, like that, yes. that you prefer to speak in you know like anybody would prefer to speak in their own language yes. my language yiddish i have nobody who can speak with me in yiddish even when yeah. i was at the vigil in front of the jewish community campus even the orthodox who came by and i tried to speak with in yiddish you know to speak with them in a you know a jewish person to jewish person about zionism you know they didn't understand you know they knew that i was speaking yiddish but they, they didn't recognize know the yiddish, back to but they couldn't answer they didn't have any wow. Yiddish because Yiddish was no longer being taught in the Hebrew schools. There was only one school here in Montreal, you know, that teaches Yiddish, you know, the social democratic, you know, old Jewish labor bund, you know, school called Parrot School. They teach Yiddish, but they don't even have the right accent. You know, like it doesn't sound like Yiddish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. The Zionists yeah. have destroyed so much, so much. Welcome yes. to Steve. Hey, Okay. So we're I talking do. about you know Zionism as as a theoretical construct and and how ridiculous it is. So, uh, <coughs> been, excuse me, I, I'm rather tired. I, I I have been thinking about that myself. Yeah, I have been thinking about that this last week. Yeah, yeah, because Christianity and um, Judaism and Islam all have wars connected with their with their existence don't they well more? yeah more, yeah more or less yeah more or less okay okay yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah they're, 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 so my thing is and then you know that's all that's all and that's all I was thinking about yeah, yeah. oh yeah, my but, so uh yeah uh Basically, uh, we'll back. We'll go back for uh, you know moving uh, forward. Uh, I I believe what's going to happen now will be, as I said, the Zionists will seize their major operations in Gaza, declare 
victory as we talked earlier. And they will besiege Gaza, not allowing uh, supplies and not allowing uh, injured to uh, travel abor abroad to uh, further their uh, treatment. And I think they will bring uh, their terror machine northward to um, Lebanon uh, under uh, the guise of where we cannot live with a terrorist group. We have to destroy it, as they said. Uh, nine months ago, but this time uh, I don't think uh, they'll be successful. Uh, everybody says it's not going to happen, but the Zionists are uh, in a in a position they have no choice but to uh, attack Lebanon because they have to regain the so-called uh, de deterrent, deterrent, mm. uh, you know, image, which it will not will not going to happen. So, what in my opinion, the Zionists are like. A person who got into a hole and he's digging more to get <laughs> himself out of the hole. So eventually, <laughs> it's it's the. I think we in our lifetime, within two, three, four years, I don't know. I think the Zionist project will be over. It's finished. Hmm. Oh, they yeah. did it to themselves. If they want to take on him, Hezbollah, <laughs> Hezbollah has one hundred and fifteen thousand missiles ready to go. They're talking about one million now. One million? Yes, one million oh, wow. projectiles. They in different sizes, sorts. including, including, uh, you know, drones, different types of drones. Nobody knows what's the number. They they're throwing numbers just like anybody. You know, like, oh, oh we think we they have a hundred thousand. Yeah, no, no, one hundred fifty thousand. No, they have a million. Uh, nobody knows. Hezbollah. That is not on the uh, stock exchange uh, telling yeah. how many. <laughs> how many <laughs> oh. I can tell you something. My my following Hezbollah on social media, so they are they've been consistently active in carrying out a, a sh strikes in different parts of uh, so called Israel or the or the occupied parts of, of, of Lebanon or Syria, they've been very active. Um, I've been this, I, I read this material here, here on my phone. There's a web page called uh, Global, Global, um, Global Re Resistance News. Uh, this is the second one. And luckily it's in English. And I just been kind of, Baffled by the ability to keep fighting, they just oh, no, they keep fighting. They're not they're, they are they are not giving up. No. Hezbollah Hezbollah's, Hezbollah has the, all the technology that the Iranian army has. They have everything. They wow. import all that technology, and they actually they manufacture. They have their own manufacturing uh, facilities in within Lebanon. Nobody knows where they are. Most likely, mm. I think they're underground, but nobody knows. So uh, they have a limited supply of, of uh, weaponry and most advanced weapon. They're not, we're not talking about uh, basic weaponry that Hamas has in Gaza. Right, right, right. right. So uh, the Zionists, they know they're damned if they do go into Lebanon. And they, they are damned if they don't. If they don't, they're 100% uh, will see the demise of their state. And if they do, if they do, they think their their chance is 50-50. 50% they win, 50% uh, win, meaning getting their deterrence back, or 50% losing. So it's a gamble for them. It's not uh, a calculated uh, attack or war. So it's uh, it's to be seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I just been very, I've been very impressed as an outsider, um, just be, being able to monitor this on Telegram. It's really for those who just are listening and you know, watching. Unless you have a connection through Telegram or some other source of news that is not NATO censored, you have no idea what's going on from mm -hmm. the resistance perspective. Or from the needs of the hospitals that have been destroyed and the humanitarian crisis for food, there's so much, there's so much um, 
noise, noise meaning things that that distract us in 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 the media, that you really have to spend some time researching and looking up what's going on and then connecting with your allies and movements to build what kind of solidarity we can build. Because it's very easy to get lost and forget about hospitals being destroyed, food not being delivered, um, people not people being executed or you no know, people in jails and prisons being being tortured. It's very easy to forget about it. But by tar by taking some time every day, mm. look at the media. It's important right now because mm. They're not going to show that on any news cast yeah. that I don't know of. They're yeah, do for instance, <laughs> it's been reported 56 uh, Palestinian prisoners have died in uh, <clears throat> the Zionist prison since October the 7th, 56. They don't report that. They, mur they were murdered. Yeah. They were murdered. They're not, they didn't just die. They were mm -hmm. murdered by their own captives, the Zionist uh, army. Right. Uh, and it's uh, we have to be very careful what when we use the words uh, murdered or died died could be natural causes mm. murdered it's it's a man made uh, you know mm. thank you thank you we, we only have a minute or so you know before this session ends <clears throat> but you know contrast that with the uh, treatment of the prisoners of war and, and the civilian hostages you know under under hamas you know and they come out you know like happy and well fed you know and uh all the rape stories you know are just another myth as another zionist myth <clears throat> the contrast cannot be greater yeah that's true that's true it's very true very very true yes. i think i think the next few days no more than a week i think we'll see escalation in the northern uh, palestine southern lebanon uh, front and i i think uh, I don't have information, but from what I can tell, there'll be a major war coming up, mm -hmm. and Israel will be get, getting really beaten big time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> Netanyahu's government is gone. It's cracked up. They don't have a government anymore. Who knows what's going to happen in the <clears throat> Zionist political scene there? That's but right. Netanyahu's strategy seems to be to prolong the war in Gaza until there's going to be a change of presidency and he thinks that you know trump is going to give him more support than biden has i don't yeah, know yeah but he'll he be could. too early too late it's already, like, it's already a, you know 100 percent you know support you know so I, how how can it get any worse i don't so you know yeah, like and then and then you're so two-faced you know like on the one hand he's saying that he agrees with you know ceasefire's proposal and yeah. then on the other hand, you know, like inside, you know, Israel, he doesn't tell, you know, Israelis that he supports the ceasefire. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, and what does he mean by ceasefire? They are talking about withdrawal of the Zionist military to unpopulated areas of Gaza. So they don't even, you know, agree to withdrawal from Gaza. They don't realize that they've been completely defeated. You know, they think they've only been partially defeated. They won't say so. They will just, you know, pretend that they've had a victory and they will retreat, a partial retreat. But there's no such thing as a partial retreat. You know, like if as long as they're in Gaza, they're going to be hit. There's Unless one, they can one get one Hamas to agree to a ceasefire and allow the Zionist military to stay inside Gaza. But Hamas, I don't think, will agree to that. The resistance say it's a one, one lump sum deal. Either you take it or leave it. It's including right. the return of all the people who've been moved out of their home back to their homes, even if it's destroyed, and allowing all the aid unhindered into them, including uh, makeshift homes and tents, etc., and replenish all the uh, infrastructure, including uh, the hospitals, yes. and uh, allowing uh, access to the uh, the outside world. For the people, uh, other than that, there will no be will be no ceasefire. It's not it's not a demand. It's what the international community been asking Israel to do from the first day. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is like Hamas is not asking that for the moon. Uh, Hamas is what is is re actually reiterating what the international uh, consensus consensus on it. It's like it's a humanitarian. Demands is not even a political demand yes. to allow people back to their homes to feed them, to to treat them, 
to allow them to access to the internet, the other world, the outside world. It's mm. it's not like something you're talking about. You know, I want this or that. No, no. So on on the other side, the Zionist says, you know, we are starving you in order to you to release our prisoners. The, there's no, there's a, no comparison with where the Zionist standing versus the Palestinian standing on this issue of the so-called ceasefire. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well said. Thank you. Well said. Yep. Yeah. Meanwhile, about a third of the hostages, of the remaining hostages, have been killed by the Zionists themselves. Mm -hmm. and, you know, they make a big deal about you know liberating three <clears throat> prisoners of war. I mean four prisoners of war meanwhile in that operation they killed three oh, other right. you know prisoners and and murdered over 300 palestinians we have to yeah. be careful when we use that over they, yeah over. 300 palestinians another five to six hundred were injured and mm -hmm. that's in 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 uh, uh collaboration with the american seal seals and uh, intelligence services so uh, who killed those Palestinians are the Americans as well, not just the Zionists. Uh, so yeah. the Zionists, the Americans are are part of this carnage in order to, to look good, to bring hmm. out those four prisoners of, of war yeah. from the hands of the Palestinian resistance. The U.S. Uh, imperialists, they must be very concerned because if Hamas... <clears throat> even has a partial victory here it'll become such an inspiration you know for the whole world absolutely 